Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today, this is our second online lecture, and in total, is lecture number nine of uh, Philosophy of Science. And in this lecture, we are going to recap whatever we have discussed in previous lectures, uh, as well as uh, to define uh, philosophy, its branches, and functions. And why do we need a philosophy of science? So uh, let's start with the first thing, the basic question, what is philosophy? Although it uh, looks very simple, but uh, this is a very deep question. And uh, philosophers have been struggling to define it uh, comprehensively. There have been different, different opinions about uh, the definition of philosophy. But generally speaking, uh, philosophy uh, is composed of two uh, Greek words, philo and sophie, uh, which means, philo means love and sophie means wisdom. So philosophy basically means love or wisdom. Uh, in Greece, Wisdom and knowledge are uh, interchangeable concepts. Uh, normally, they, uh, they, they use both uh, Sophie for knowledge as well as for wisdom. So uh, literally, philosophy would mean love for knowledge or love for wisdom. Then uh, the next sub-question would arise, why philosophy or why do we need philosophy? Um, to begin with, I would say that uh, God has created so many species uh, in this universe, and including angels, human beings, animals, all sorts of things. But only human being has been blessed with the faculty that is called intellect. The faculty which we use to reflect upon things. The reason causes the question why. In fact, this question why we need philosophy is a philosophical question itself. Because since the birth of human being, because he was blessed with the intellect, the curiosity, started questioning about things. Why, how, what, and all sorts of these questions. So when you say philosophy means love for wisdom or love for knowledge, that basically means that whenever you fall in love with something, obviously you try to achieve that. And you always try to get that. So philosophy would mean uh, trying to get knowledge about everything or anything. About universe, about originality of universe, about man, why he was created, whether he was created or he was evolved, what is the purpose of life, all sorts of things. So in a nutshell, we could say that philosophy is basically search for the truth, the ultimate truth, the truth of the world, truth of universe, truth of man, in which man, both dimensions, physical and spiritual, state of mind, any question which arises in a mind that is basically philosophy. So philosophies attempt to explore the reality of anything in this universe. The second thing is what is the role and function of philosophy? So as I said that philosophy's main goal or aim is to try to find out what is the reality, the reality of anything or everything. So that is basically 
the role of philosophy try to dig out how and why things are made created or evolved in this universe now the function how does it operate basically philosophy has a twofold nature it has two functions to play the first or prior function is to know the reality of the universe the world everything and once we have grasped that reality of the ultimate truth how can we utilize this knowledge in order to improve the quality of life so philosophy is two function first to explore the reality and second to devise certain principles and rules in order to live a good life in this world so the functions of philosophy are twofold in nature now although philosophy is considered to be a mother of all sciences and to begin with uh, it was philosophy which gave birth to all sciences whether natural sciences or social sciences or humanities arts all branches of science or knowledge they started with philosophy why because as i said philosophy asked questions so all these branches of knowledge they stem from philosophy philosophy gave birth to all these branches of knowledge one would say that well mathematics is the mother of all natural sciences or sociology is the mother of all social sciences because you cannot imagine a natural science without mathematics and also you cannot imagine social sciences without sociology but both natural and social sciences they try to explore reality in different aspects different aspects of reality like natural sciences obviously try to explore the reality of nature of the universe while social sciences try to explore the reality of society social relationships how people are connected with each other how they react what kind of rules or social norms should be there in order to live a good life etc etc to begin with all these uh, branches of knowledge were the part of philosophy but slowly and gradually when uh, the knowledge increased it was quite difficult to to capitalize all the knowledge in just under one uh, title philosophy also as uh, soon as the problems slowly and gradually were sorted out uh, these were given different names of branches of knowledge and they became different like like the knowledge like the uh, reality about um, physical bodies their relationships uh, when human knowledge increased the passage of time uh, they branched it out and named it as physics because physics is concerned with the uh, exploring the reality of physical bodies and their relationships what is energy etc etc similarly like chemistry it it, it involves uh, what are chemicals what is their reality what is the chemical reaction all sorts of things about life biology how the life was uh, how the life started and with the universe how it has been evolved and how it is going uh, through the time and 
the sub branch of that geology and it's botany it's a reflex upon the plants and the science of plants so on so on and so forth but there are certain uh, branches there are certain aspects of knowledge uh, there are certain problems which are still need to be sorted out and they are still ongoing so they are, that, that's why they are still in the part of philosophy because philosophy is trying to dig out uh, the answers of those questions so in our contemporary times there are four major branches uh, of philosophy or rather i would say uh, philosophy as a subject or as an academic subject philosophy has four main branches and the first one uh, is called metaphysics so what is metaphysics as we know physics is about physical world physical bodies their relationships with each other so what does metaphysics mean so matter is is again, again uh, a word which means beyond so metaphysics basically literally means beyond physics or beyond physical world so metaphysics is a branch of philosophy which discusses the reality of physical world is what is behind this physical world what is beyond this physical world rather how this physical world came into being what is meant by the universe how and why this universe was created or evolved what is the reality of universe and man being a part of this universe what is the reality of man okay man is a combination of two aspects i would say a uh, physical man has two aspects physical and spiritual so what do we mean by spirit what is that thing which leaves when we which, which leaves the body and a man becomes becomes a dead body another thing is why do we need metaphysics why because again the main purpose of philosophy is to explore the reality and it is natural that man who lives in the in this universe this is natural he tries to dig out the reality of this universe why it was created or evolved rather who created it if it is created okay people call it god what is the reality of god how did he created this world how do we know god how did god created man or whether man was evolved from the first gene as darwinian would say all these sort of questions because they are not resolved yet so they are the part of philosophy and they are discussed in the one of the major branches of philosophy which is called metaphysics so that's why it is called metaphysics because it discusses the realities beyond this physical world uh, some people think that metaphysics was named because as metaphysics because when uh, andronicus of rhodes he was arranging the books of works of Aristotle uh, he put the books which discusses which we which we discussed all these uh, realities beyond physical world after uh, the books of physics written by uh, Aristotle that is why they named it metaphysics anyway it is it, not a uh, concern here that why metaphysics was named as metaphysics but what do we discuss in metaphysics that is the main question 
and why we need metaphysics. If we did not reflect upon metaphysical realities, probably we would not have got to this point or science would have not got to the point where we are today. So this is the major branch of philosophy and in our later uh, lectures, we will try to discuss different uh, subject matters in, in metaphysics, different branches of metaphysics, such as ontology, which is the study of being, cosmology, which, which is the study of universe, and what is the substance which is which, which, of which this universe is composed of, whether it is matter or idea, what is space and time, what do we mean by human freedom, whether man is free or determined, what is space and time, etc. Et all these uh, concepts, all these ideas are discussed in metaphysics. Another branch of philosophy is called epistemology. Epistemology is basically uh, the theory of knowledge. Again, the question, it is the knowledge of knowledge. We always talk about knowledge, philosophy is, uh, as is, is philosophy is the search for the truth, or philosophy is uh, um, love for knowledge. Hang on a minute, what do we mean by knowledge? What is knowledge, basically? So epistemology tries to dig out the fact that what is knowledge? What do we call knowledge? This is quite a difficult question. And in order to answer that, first we need to know how do we get knowledge? How do we gain knowledge? And after digging out that, we would be able to know what is valid knowledge and what is pseudo-knowledge. And then we will come to know what is the real knowledge. So in epistemology, we try to figure out what are the sources of knowledge? What do we mean by knowledge? What is valid and invalid knowledge? And how does man get knowledge? whether it's sense experiences, which are the primary, primary source of knowledge, or whether it is mind, which is the primary, primary source of knowledge, or whether there is some kind of higher form of knowledge, intuitive knowledge. So all these questions, I mean, throughout the history of philosophy, uh, different philosophers have come up with different theories, but that can be divided into three major, major theory. And that is empiricism, which believes that it is the sense experience which, which provides the foundation of knowledge. On the other hand, there is rationalism, which says no, it's not the sense experience because senses might deceive it's the mind, it's the idea, which provides foundation of knowledge. Yet again, there's another group of philosophers, although a tiny group of philosophy, I would say, who believe that there is another higher form of knowledge, which is called intuitive knowledge. Knowledge through intuition direct knowledge. Theologians also believe in this kind of knowledge. They call it revelation. So this problem is still going on and there is a big, huge, huge debate throughout the history of philosophy and still going on. So we still do not know what is the primary source of knowledge. Although if you reflect, we cannot deny the importance of sense perception, neither we can deny the importance of reason or mind. 
And there are certain things which are intuitive in nature. We do not know through sense perception, although some philosophers, some people would object on this remark, but there are certain things which we do not know through our sense experience, neither through our reason or intellect. And that is called intuitive knowledge. So epistemology is basically discusses and it is still discussing this problem of knowledge. So what is the primary source of knowledge? Uh, we will discuss these uh, concepts, these schools of thoughts, different philosophers, sense perceptionists, rationalists, intuitionists in detail later on uh, when we move on in this course further. The other two branches of, of philosophy are ethics and logic. As I mentioned earlier, the philosophy has two main functions or twofold nature. First, to explore the reality, and second, to devise certain principles and rules through which we can live good life in this universe. The third branch of philosophy is called axiology, and axiology includes both, both aesthetics and ethics. Aesthetics is a theory of art. What is art? What do we mean by art? How did it generate? What are the concepts of beauty and ugliness, etc., etc.? While ethics is concerned with human conduct, how we ought to spend our life in this universe. What are, what are good and bad concepts? What do we mean by right and wrong? Generally speaking, we always talk about that such and such person is good, such and such person is bad, or such and such action is right and such and such action is wrong. But what is that element which makes something good or bad or right and wrong? You would say that Telling a lie is a bad thing. But why, why do we think it's a bad thing? What is that element which makes it bad? What is basically moral philosophy tries to dig out because it's obviously it's a branch of philosophy that goes deeper, deeper than ordinary concepts. Generally speaking, people always talk about good and bad, right and wrong. But what is the reality of good and bad? What is the reality of right and wrong? What is that thing which makes it good and bad? Again, philosophers differ. Some people think that basically it's the pleasure and pain which makes an action good or bad. But other would say no. It does not necessarily yield some pleasure if an action has to be good. Some people would say that no, good and bad are defined by religion. Some people would say right and wrong actions depend upon the consequences. They yield good consequences we can call those actions good. But sometimes if you think, sometimes some good actions would result into pain. Are we justified to say that such and such actions are bad? So that's basically moral philosophy for you. Moral philosophy tries to, or ethics tries to dig out these issues it tries to know the reality of good and bad, right and wrong. The fourth branch of philosophy 
which is quite interesting and, and quite important for especially in the context of science that's called logic what is logic basically logic logic is the study of those methods and principles which distinguish between correct reasoning and incorrect reasoning now the question arises what do we mean by reasoning as i mentioned uh, in the beginning that human being is blessed with the with the faculty of intellect and this is the peculiarity of human being to convince others with the intellect with reasoning with 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 the kind of rational arguments so how do we compose these arguments how can we present our views in such a way that we can convince the listener and why do we need logic obviously all of our lives we need to convince people and its peculiarity is again is the speciality of human being to convince people with reason rather than force force is the element which is used by animals man ought to use his reason in order to convince people whether it's in ordinary life i mean if you go to the market buying something you try to bargain with people you know try to convince them to get that particular thing cheaper in return they try to convince you to sell it to you marketing in the courts the lawyers try to convince the judge that their client is you know justified whatever they believe similarly in in, in all walks of life you need reasoning you need argument to try to convince people so how we can compose that argument what are the rules and what are the principles under which we can compose our argument so that it's easier for us to convince people so that is basically discussed in logic so these are the main branches of of philosophy and we are going to discuss these in detail on on further when we move on to our next lectures